August. And slowly but surely, the leaves are turning. There's a bit of a cool wind in the air, and that means one thing. Football season is among us. This Saturday, Marty Snook Park, Hagerstown, Maryland. We have five set of games going on. We are back in order here to Washington County Flag Football League. But before we talk about this season, let's talk about last. Last season saw Broad Axe winning their eighth consecutive championship. A run that's not been seen in this league ever before, or in any other league. Eight straight years. Season, sorry about that. Um, once again, dominant over Ruckus in the championship game, 34-21. And speaking of Ruckus, last season, they rose to the occasion. A major turnaround from a disastrous, almost disastrous, fall 2016 season where they went 2-7, and seven, but won the B bracket. And that little bit of a sparking momentum led to a major run, 7-2 in the regular season. They knocked off the Red Knights in the semifinals, but just not enough to be brought after the championship. Nonetheless, still very impressed with Ruckus. Great run. Let's see what they can do this year. Also, the one story that everybody could not, talk, or could not stop talking about was TNT. The one name that came out of everybody's mouth. The biggest villain in this league, perhaps next to Broad X. Every team they faced in the lower half, they destroyed. And when it came to upper teams, they met the standard. They beat both Broad X and Ruckus something no other team did last season, before falling short to Broad Axe in the semifinal game. Can TNT come back this year, perhaps, and do the same thing, if not more? It also featured Top Gun shocking run, 0-9. They had not won a game since May of 2016, going into the playoffs of the B bracket, when suddenly a miracle happened. Top Gun knocked off the Ducks. They went and they beat the Spartans a week later, and became the B bracket champions of a two and nine record after not winning a single game throughout the season. However, we also saw some tragedy last season. The Red Knight fell, as the Knights have lost a lot of players from last season. Almost their entire defense is gone. They are a shell of their former selves. Can they bounce back this season, or is it truly nightfall? Marcus Street massacred. A lack of numbers throughout the season. They were still competitive, but just not enough to field a team going into the playoffs and not enough to field a team entering this season. Also, this offseason was met with the death of the Ducks. As a whole, it was the best season I have seen in recent years since my return to this league in the fall of 2014. And with that, let's talk about this fall. Let's start with the new power rankings. Starting with number 11 in the power rankings, the Brunswick Assassins. The Brunswick Assassins are a brand new team to the Washington County Flag Football League. Founded by R.J. Hilliard and Brian Swagger, both formerly of the Warriors. Hilliard, their starting quarterback, is a journeyman in the Washington County Flag Football League who has told me personally that he looks to bring a bunch of Brunswick alumni together. Number 10 is the Affiliates. They are a bunch of men brought together with one common goal, to win. They were formed back in June. They are mainly based out of here or there from across. They won the Owings Mills tournament a few weeks ago, made and only their second tournament playing together. Very impressive to start. Um, underrated team, obviously. Like I said, this team is only at the bottom because of the fact that they are still new to the league. But to learn more about them, let me turn it over to uh, John Reed. Sheesh. 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 Four years ago, Tuesday. Actually, Monday. Monday, August 23rd. August 23rd was a Wednesday night in 2017 when we did the very first episode of Live for Washington County. Holy moly, as I used to say. That's crazy. Sheesh. Two weeks off. That was different. Aside from that, what, 9 a.m. show I did? That was fun. 
Yeah, sorry guys. I ain't gonna lie. You've been kind of getting the, the the burnout is real, but also real life is real. <laughs> I am disappointed a little bit because I haven't got myself together, but at the same time, Antino's a pain. Two pain to pain. A lot of things are a pain. Everything's a pain. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's fall, y'all. It's football season. Holy. <sighs> ah, man. I don't want to cuss anymore, though. We can't cuss anymore by rule. That's the sponsorship rule. Um, nah, we're going to say whatever. Because this is like, this is fall season. Fall season is different than spring season. Spring season, you know, you're, you're coming fresh out of nationals, fresh out of winter. By fall, everybody who's still together, and I make an emphasis because a lot of the time, sometimes teams do form over the summer. Summer of 2017 when the affiliate nation formed. And the way it came up in Washington County, the, better, the team we saw against the Warriors that day in 2017 when they made their debut just 10 days later. How much has changed? 2017 is a forgotten year. We for, no, no one forgot about 2017. Not around here. Don't get me wrong. A lot of people would want you to forget about 2017 because they'll tell you it wasn't so great. The league went downhill. It wasn't fun. But we had tons of fun. Yeah. We had a great time. great time. Marty Snook was a place to be in 2017. Yeah. Whether it be, yeah, spring and fall. I remember that first spring day coming out there. In 2017 for the Ducks, we had ruckus week one. It was a big game for us. We were all hyped up. We were excited. Steven Renner was the quarterback. We were all big into Renner. Renner had almost beaten ruckus in a playoff game in the BE semis the year prior. We were this close to beating ruckus, and it would have been the biggest win at the time for us. We would have been B champions because we would have played the Spartans and would have won because that's how that works. You played the Spartans, you're guaranteed to win. What? I'm just talking shit. It's whatever. It's Friday night. It's blunt talk. Let's have some fun. Let's keep it loose. I know there's a lot of things going on. This has been a wild year when you think about it. We've been on like some kind of like fear and loathing and Las Vegas kind of mind trip of sorts. Hell, let's not talk about nationals. Sheesh. That's a story for another day. Ugh, fear and loathing in Orlando. So I call that one. That's fear and loathing in Orlando. That's a wild one. I mean, you talk about it, too. Like You think about everything that's going down this year. Ocean City. Ocean City was awesome, man. Old school tournament. Going out there, having a good time, covering some great games. We killed it 100%. You know, Ocean City really showed you how great the DMV really does the live streaming game. There's nobody better than the DMV when it comes to down here. Monet, you, me, Tyler, throw in Keith Giles. There's a lot of guys up north who do a lot of great work. Don't get me wrong. I'm big on Jerome Russo. Jerome Russo is right up there with me up there. He's great. Awesome technical guy. Commentary. Him and I disagree on that. We're opposites on that. But when we collaborate, it's beautiful music. It's great. Mark Brown. Me, Mark Brown. You know, they say he's the Ross Collins of Rhode Island. Like, I like it, man. I like it a lot. Like, they're doing a lot of – dude, everybody's been saying that. I've been hearing that all summer. Right. Oh. Yeah. For once, we're not calling you Joey Blaze. Yeah, there is that. See? There is that. Like I said, man, summer was wild. You know, you take back the other tournaments. Atlantic City, remember that? We went out there. It was hot. We killed the S7. Oh, shit. The AC was probably the hottest day I think I ever worked for like a tournament. Yeah. yeah, that was a different kind of heat. Like, I was not used to that. Um, that was – that's where you got to be ready, you know. It's a learning experience, learning curve, learning growth. I thought the whole media killed it between us, XFFL. Um, of course, uh, big shout-out to Workhorse as well at that tournament. Like, that was – that's what nine-man media should be, a combination of the best – the best talents coming together and working in mm-hmm. conjunction with nine-man to make sure they get it right. That's how I see it at least. Like, I feel like we do a great job down here with a lot of different tournaments. Like, sometimes we have hiccups. Like, I felt bad about Charm City Classic and not being able to get dirty birds. And Riot Squad has somewhat of a gripe. But as I said, like, with Riot Squad, that was kind of a tricky situation. 
because we already had Tyler live of like 60 viewers right. on a public page. Like at that point, I'm not, I'm not going to divert away from that. He's got the whole film. He's going to make it great. And I, I got to like, bro, you guys had Tyler cover your game, bro. That's one of the top streamers in the country. Y'all should be flattered. That's awesome. It sucks though, because we wanted to get you guys, but like it just didn't work out that way. You know, we'll get it next time though. Riot Squad is always one of those teams I want to see. Like they're one of the best teams you'll find out there on the B circuit. Uh, they're trying to make some big steps. They definitely have a lot of potential. Quarterfinal was the Charm City Classic. Um, they do a good job. I like Riot Squad. And you know, we've been in York a lot. I've been in York. You've been in York. Yeah. York's kind of like becoming our home away from home. Right? Right. I don't know, man. I love Shippensburg too, though. I love Shippensburg. I love York. I love Baltimore. Hey, shout out DC. Ken, how you doing, man? Hope you're well. Um, shout out Hagerstown. You know, I love Washington County. Um, man. Washington County. Yeah. We're not going to be there this fall. Yeah, what a weird summer that was. Like, you know, like I always expected it to come to an end at some point. And, you know, I personally don't really blame uh, either brother for stepping away from it. Um, commissionership's a hard job. Um, Tom loves the game. He's a player. He really wants to make things happen. He's always done a great job with broad acts. I didn't have any issue with Tom as a commissioner. I thought Tom, for what the situation really is, when you look at it, handled it as well as he could. Um, he was just a guy in a bad spot. Um Andy, of course, he had the area for a while. He did a great job keeping it going. Like, it's hard to say where it is now. If not, see, look, Ross, Jay Black is saying where's a misfits jersey. See, Ross, I asked you about getting this. Well, it's my fault. I, I came unprepared. Yeah. Tonight literally went from being a yeah, show. So, yeah, tonight was supposed to be about York fully, but I kind of want to – let's just kick off our fall coverage. Let's just do it. I was going to save this for Wednesday. But you know what? Tonight, let's just give a preview of what's to come because we got to give the audience something to love. If you want to call in, talk about anything this summer, this spring, this year, or better yet, this fall, make it happen. Hey, shout out to the Misfits. 2-0 and in the GCFFA. They went up there and gave it to the Long Island Reapers, smacked them Ooh. in the face in their own island. How embarrassing. You get donutted on your own island by a team, bro. That drove up all the way from the DMV that morning. Right. It could be different cup playoffs. I want to sleep fully on the Reapers. We don't know what we're going to get. I thought that was a team that showed a lot of promise in AC. Um, you know, they got smarter up at uh, Albany. So we'll see what happens. I like what they did last week. Look forward to seeing more misfits up there. Hey, shout out Workhorse Media, Pat Johnson, Eddie Fertucci. Uh, they do a great job covering games up there. We'll definitely have that footage out at some point, um, edited and trimmed. That'll be something we work on. Um, me and Pat and Eddie were talking about that, trying to get that done, um, making sure we get some good footage out there. I like to help out nine man in that regard. Like, if we can get that footage out there, I always give credit to the media. I'm willing to help edit it out and host it and make sure it gets out there. Right. Always give full credit. You know, that's one of the best things about the Team Blunt Talk channel on YouTube, which – I have thought about was trying to like make it a straight up nine man channel, but there's so much other content we've done over the years on there at this point. We've done what five man, we've done seven, we've done eights. It's just been a whole insane amount. Yes, I was, I was Catherine. I was, I was very much trying to blame that on Ross. Um, I was Catherine. I don't know if she heard me. I was just making sure she did. <laughs> um, but hope you're okay over there. Um, yeah, but bro, take a look at these jerseys. So tonight we pay us the tributes, the TBT Blazers jersey made by Mr. Rob Lane. We always will have that hanging up there. Big yeah. respect to Rob Lane yeah. for making that jersey. That's one of my favorites. Um, that's one like that I really love and will truly appreciate. Yeah. yeah. You know, Rob can make any jersey anytime he wants a TBT. Like, he does great work. He's better at this than I am. You've seen what I make. It's like, it's just basically an NWO logo. Um, a lot of guys do that, though. Everybody tries to take it. It's, it's homage is what they call it in art. It's an homage. Um, Natty Ice tonight, you know? 
um, in honor of Matty Ice up at KFFL, Matt Eisenberg. We're drinking Matty Ice. Big shout out, Matt. I know Matt's a Matty Ice guy. That's why they call him Matty Ice, right? Because of the Matty Ice thing. I, I, don't, I don't think so. No? Okay. I mean, it might be why they call him that, but I don't think he drinks that. Yeah. I don't think he drinks that. I don't think he does either. I don't know. I just thought it made sense in my head when I thought about it. Look, Jay Black, hold on a second. Don't hate on me. This is this is just what the, this was just was available. I'm a cheapskate and won't buy my own beer. I could have handled this myself, but I'm not a man. I'm sorry. I'm trash. Let's keep it going. Jersey tonight, though. TBT. Rob Lane. Hey, back in the Jersey. This is Collins, but this is little Maddox Collins. He's yeah. starting to play tackle football now. First time ever as a kid. That's the new Boonesboro B Triple Wait. What is that? The Pony League or Mini? Mini Pony. Mini Pony. Mini Pony. Yeah. yeah. What draws first game? Sunday. This Sunday. And you got Walkersville, right? Yeah. Big time matchup. Boonesboro Walkersville. Hey. This is a shout out to two of my homes, man. It, that's true. Hey, house divided. Yeah. But, uh, however, Beaver, Beaver. this college is going to be wearing Boonesboro blue, not that Walkersville blue. Yeah, with the orange in there now. Yeah, I really like that jersey. That new design looks really nice yeah, in the back. Nice. Oh, I like it, too. Yeah, I did a good way of putting the orange. And you know what? Tribute to the Warriors. You guys finished out a five-year run. Um, hard to believe. You know, tribute, shout-out to the franchise. Big respect. Um, I'm sure we'll be back a little bit. Some way or another. Alumni Bowl 5. Brunswick, we coming for you. Kyle Ryan, Dr. Duke, whatever his name is, line that shit up. I don't know his name. Kyle, whatever his name is. Um, looking forward to seeing that documentary, though. Here, it's hell of a lit. Um, Killer Bees. Hey, KFFL champions. You know why there's no Misfits jersey up here, Jay Black? Because you all aren't even the best team in KFFL. The Killer Bees are coming into this season. Oh, the Killer Bees <laughs> last season proved to everybody that they're the best team in the Keystone Flag Football League. By far, 100%. They proved it. Their run was better than Misfits. It was better than TBT. Like, what the Misfits and TBT did was nothing compared to the Killer Bees last year. And all that momentum, winning the championship, all those big, talented stars coming back and everything else. You take a look at the guys they had on that team. The talent alone, you got to think about it, Ross. Killer Bees had – they had Tyler, that Tay, that Lurry, that Jay Black. Oh. Polo. Oh. Oh. Uh, who you got? Huh? Who else did the bees got? Uh, I don't remember who you already said. So. I think I named five straight misfits almost. Yeah, and then I named good. Polo. The good. Gaskins, yeah, but he's on demons. So we got four misfits, two demons. Well, who's quarterback? Show him up. Demons. Hey, I hear he's a demon. It's a, it's a good transition. I'm for it. It's a good move. Go against the grain. I like it. So they don't have modes. He's a demon. So miss. So the four misfits, three demons. <laughs> hmm. Akaja. Yeah, they got oh demons. So four misfits, four demons. Houston was there. Hey, Brady says Houston's there. So they got Houston. So they got Houston. They got a road show. They got both Cardies. They got Kyle Jason. Is Pure Chaos going to merge with them? Are they going to finally make that marriage official? I feel like that should be a thing. Like, make it like a bad boys thing. I feel like that should be a thing. Yeah. Not a bad boys thing. That's a bad example. That was a terrible example. What's a better conglomeration? Misfits. They could be the new misfits. Yeah, they could be like a JV Misfits. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Ugh. Killer Bees. 
So yeah, Ron Savage. Oh, he's yeah, misfits too. Yeah. <laughs> so nine miss. Yeah, Shane's a beat. Oh. They have Brady better. No way. He's an outlaw. Wait, is Brady back though? If they bring back Brady Benner, that needs to be the campaign. All of it. You know what? Tanner needs to stop posting on like different public base and just be like, hashtag B, 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 B. Send that to Tanner. Bring back Brady Benner. Hashtag 4B. Bring back Brady Benner. I like it. Yeah. So, Killer Bees, best team in Keystone. How did you say his name when he popped up? He was there the whole time. Shane Zabir? Yeah. Sabu? I can see for miles. <laughs> Baez Auto. Bro, how many times did we cover Baez Auto this summer? Holy moly, bro. That's it. I counted it. They played 21 games across four tournaments this summer in, like, what was essentially four different flag football styles. Like, I got to give give up for Baez because yeah. they played York 8-man, then they played 5-man big man, yeah. then they played 9-man. Uh, that game with main event at Charm City Classic. What an epic battle. Back and forth, Mike D versus Ray Wagner. That was a game from when I first saw Baez in that A bracket. My first thought was I would really like to see a Ray Wagner Mike D matchup. That was something in my head where I'm like, that needs to happen in this tournament. Because something told me that it was going to be big. And that game was just insane. Back and forth start to finish on top of that like you have Baez who nearly pulls off a major upset in the quarterfinal where main event mm-hmm. you know I was talking to my colleague up in Long Island Mr. Jerome Russo Mr. Predator Productions stop stealing his stuff guys Jerome you're my guy shout out to Jerome I'm sure he's watching yeah everybody's working off Jerome now I did it X but like, nah, um, nah, Jerome, you're my guy. Shut up. Love you well. Um, we were talking about it, and like main event had not had been in the final four of every tournament that they participated in, going as far back as three years ago, and it could be further back. I'm not sure if they don't have the records of like all their tournaments from prior to 2019, but I went back as far as. Rhode Island, where I'm not sure where they finished, but I know through at least the end of 2018, there was a possibility that they had been in every final four, every tournament they had been in. Like, that's consistency. And if they had lost to Baez, that would have been their first time not making it in years. But Baez just fell short in the end. Mike D, final drop, man. He just kills yeah, it. I need to get back and watch that. that game is epic, dude. Like, if you haven't watched it already, like, Baez's main event is a game of the year candidate. Just for how it's just how great and back and forth it is. Like Baya stepped it up to the plate. Main event didn't have their best, but they still had a lot of good names, a lot of good talent. That, yeah, like this was like this was a good enough team for them. Like, yeah. but but Baya stepped it up to the plate. But I think it would be a little bit different in a rematch. I think main event coming a little more loaded would do a bit better. That said, though, Baez, they keep growing. They keep it, making it going the way it is. Right now, they got a nice little hold on York despite losing Blick. Which, honestly, a Blick, if you ask me, that DQ, no. I disagree. But I didn't want to say that at the tournament mix. I didn't want to call it, but I just, I just didn't like that. I just feel like a, a DQ, I get it. Maybe that's the rule, I don't know, but – I just I agree. And after hearing what happened, I agree. Yeah, like I've gotten different and like I just I don't I don't know. I just feel like that's something where unless it got to a point where fists are being thrown. I always say this, like I don't think anything should be called until it's out of control. If you can get it back in control and keep it calm and keep it calmed down. It's cool, but if, say, you get to the point where neither side's clearing, you start counting right. as a ref, and if they don't get back, call it. Or they get more intense, call it. That's, I mean, that's just my opinion on that. <laughs> I'm not a director. I'm not that a ref. Be kind of wild. 
I don't think I, I've ever seen a ref do that. I think that would, it be, would be a warning thing. If you start as well, like, like it, that, it, it and the ref back. was just like, you got 10 seconds to I call this whole game. 10, 9. It just started counting. Well, some, well you know, the it. instinct for a lot of guys is the player who's aggravated may not back down initially, but somebody is going to say, dude, yeah. no, get back. Yeah. Because that's going to kick in at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't like that determining it, especially in a game where they were up. He's had to have a run. But, like, but, that, like, shout out to Gang Green, though. Gang Green had a great run. Like, they, they're showing out this year. Their comeback year is going great. I'm happy for those guys. Um, I'm hoping yeah, to see more of that. them. They, they played well. I like them. They, they run a well. very, they run a very interesting uh, eight man kind of offense. Right. Um, like, it's fun to watch uh, others York Gage. We're going to be up there this weekend for three of them, actually. I will be at least. Um, I'm really excited about it. Uh, YAFFL, they're going to be kicking off. Um, we're going to be doing, let me see, about three games on Sunday. Coverage begins at 1 p.m. It's going to be on uh, both the TBT YouTube and TBT Facebook, or Joey Blaze Facebook, I should say. As many platforms as possible. You know me. Uh, first game out will be Ball Hawks and Salon Envy. Uh, looking forward to that one. Ball Hawks coming into this one. Uh, no wins, no losses. Uh, but looking like they got a lot of potential for the season. Salon Envy, they're coming in. They're looking good. They're feeling good. I really like how this team's looking. Um, we're looking forward to seeing how Salon Envy does this season in the YAFFL. Plan B versus Outlaws at 2 p.m. Um, Plan B, you know, they're not always going to be up there. They're very much a B team. Um, but they are getting up there in terms of competing as an A team. Um, hopefully as time goes on, I think they're going to grow to that. Outlaws coming in. I like what I saw out of Outlaws. Don't get me wrong. They had a good run in that tournament. They got to the top six. When you finish in the upper half of a bracket, that just shows you that you are capable of going out there and getting the necessary wins it takes to get to where you need to be. Um, this Plan B Outlaws game, that's going to be the game of the day. That's going to be a battle. That's going to be a war. These two teams coming into it, there's a lot, a lot of tension, a lot of heat. This is going to be high noon. High heat, high tension. I know it's a 2 p.m. kickoff, but it's going to be a noon kickoff in the Lou. I know they'll be watching. Shout out, Preston and Skinny. Yeah. Um, shout out, NTBE Wolfpack. I did it again. Yeah, I know. I looked at the frame. NTB Wolfpack jersey, Twan G on the wall. We got a chance to see Twan G at the Charm City Classic. He and the guys made the trip from the Lou. Yeah. Final game of the day, Vipers and Avalanche, 3 p.m. Uh, really looking forward to that one. Vipers coming in. Um, we'll see what they do. Avalanche, they're bringing it all the time. So, should be a competitive game. So, York this weekend, looking forward to it. Coverage begins at 1, we'll end at around 4 o'clock. So, if you got some time this Sunday, block out three hours, sit down, turn on TBT, and watch the YAFFL, York Area Flag Football League. Live. Sorry, I was channeling some of my past life. I don't know what that uh, was. Yeah, we'll be happy to come. It's crack. Oh, Hell we'll be live for your game, right? You're going live, right? No. We need the camera five times. I don't think that's. Huh? I have to clear it out with some people first. Yeah, I don't like that idea. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> if we had permission, sure, but I don't like the idea of going live like that. No. I might film some of it. Yeah, you're a coach. Thought about yeah, you're all you're allowed to. You're a coach. <laughs> Me personally, I'll be in York. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to fall though. This fall is going to be awesome. Misfits demons, dude. Yeah. Misfits and demons is the first game I've heard confirmed for KFFL week one. Um, yeah, great way to kick it off. Yeah, uh, Keith Giles will be out for that week. I'll be in though. Joey Blaze be live first week of the Keystone Flag Football League. September. I might venture up there. Come on up, man. Come on up, man. I might venture up there. Come on up, man. I, don't know. I got bad feelings with that field. Man. Why you got bad feelings? Right, come on, man. I know. I think we need to bury the 
We need a better you want, my leg. <laughs> right there in the middle of the field. <laughs> no, nah, hold on. Let me finish. We want Barry or TBT jersey. Nah, come on, man. Hey, we're going to burn a Green Machine jersey because I blame the Green Machine for that. Reckless Villains had nothing to do with it. That was all Green Machine. Okay. It was also me, too. I, it, was a, it, was a, it was like a voodoo. I do. It was a voodoo spell. I sold your knee. I sold my cousin's career. And I sold my flag football team's future when it came out the championship. We what can I say? Though. We got it, though. It was worth it all. I'm the king of Keystone, no matter what happens this season. <laughs> Misfits, you know, I like the misfits. I want to, I really like those guys. And my guys, demons, I like the demons, I like the X dogs. Who else is in that league? Killer bees, killer bees, outlaws. I like the, the other bees, outlaws. I'm trying to figure out, like, who's a, Venom. I, Venom, bro. I love Venom. Venom's my guy. Uh, I don't think the reckless villain will come back. <laughs> I don't know. TJ might be able to find some more. Pure chaos. Yeah. Yeah, chaos, my guys, too. RJ. Shout out to RJ. Yeah, sure be pure chaos. They can't. They're both in the league. Maybe it could, though. Like, I don't know. Some teams need to. I think we need to start, like, merging teams for no reason. I don't think that's our call, bro. We used, we used to try to do that back in the day. We pitched Broad X, where it was Broad X, but like it was X Dogs players too. That should have been a thing. I would have, I would have taken this. Either. That would be a thing. Broad X, God, could you imagine? Like, I think that would have been a pretty, actually legit, like B team that could do more in like certain tournaments. Well, that'd been a cool merger. I would love to have seen that at some point. They can even just go for their gray jerseys just to keep it like neutral. Like, there you go. Match your shirts already, and you keep your team still. Nothing different. I don't know. That's just me, though. That's just me. I'm the guy who curated TBT by saying, inbox me if you want to play flag football. What's up, Washington County? Schools? Yeah, just an alumni game this season. An alumni game? Yeah. Of what alumni? All right, Brad Knight. Oh, so we should kick it back to 2000. What year? X Dogs, Ruckus. Why would X Dogs play in? Oh, okay, so we're about 2017. All of them. Bro, we should do that. If you've ever had a team that. Top Gun needs to come back. Top Gun would be a beautiful thing to come back. Top Gun would be an amazing thing to come back. Dude, Top Gun needs to come back. What else? Remember we pitched uh, pitched, uh, Top Gun Warriors? What was it? It was like a fun game. Uh, That way you. Well, we got this going on. We don't want to get hurt. Look, I don't know. I, I don't have any control over that. Like, I I, I have no call. Out there. Yeah, I mean, Washington County can do it. Like, I don't know who the commissioner is. I really don't. Sure. I heard, like, rumors that it was, like, this dude. But, like, I heard nothing after that. And then, like, next thing I know, there was, like, no refs. And so, like, it didn't happen. Yeah. It's life. Who cares? The refs. We have flag football. It's nine man flag football. And honestly, bro, I'm just, I don't know. Spreading, come on, dude. I don't know. Shit just, shit just hasn't felt right in a while. Something ain't feeling right. I don't know. Kind of like a weird like year. Like, remember where things were a year ago when we were like talking about Washington County 2020? Showtime, Misfits, Spartans, X Dogs, Broad Axe, Ruckus, Warriors, Program, Pure Chaos, Program, dude. Bro, I'm really looking forward to the demons. Like, Bro, I real look, don't get me wrong here. Bro, scram to the demons. Yo, look. I think this new strain of cram is like the strongest strain they've had yet. Like, I, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, last year I wrote off the program. They're not dead. Like, it's not going to be the exact same team. Don't expect the team to play like the program. I think you're going to get a way different approach. 
I also think you're going to see a more modern team. Program had always been a defensive-oriented team, and that's never a bad thing. I always said you want to get your defense down first and foremost, so that way you can at least, like, get stops. Because offense, when you're first starting out in flag, you know, it's kind of hard to get down if you don't have experience in the game itself. Or you're just coming on there. Or you're a first team. Like, you're a Warriors team five years ago. Like, remember, you all trying to put together an offense. Yeah. Good size, man. Yeah. You guys were good? What? No, we were not. You must be survivors. Our first team? We were not good at all. I know. But, you know, I had a problem with survivors. Like, we you had to take your highlights from it, build from it. It's hard. You got to, like, figure stuff out. I don't know, dude. I just feel like, in my opinion, you got to get that down. I think that defense will come back with the same intensity. I think you'll see a little more polished attack, though. I think offensively. If we see what we saw out of the Demons at the uh, New Year's Invitational back in January, that little tournament in Greencastle you covered, uh, the one that we were in Greencastle the whole day, um, not the one where we uh, had the tournament in two states. Um, that was the Mason Dixon classic. I want to call that the Mason Dixon classic. No, wasn't wrong, post office. no uh, you weren't. No, no that was uh, my that was my dumbass fault. <laughs> and, it all worked out. Yeah, we finished it at the fairgrounds. Yeah, it all worked out. Yeah, like it's always good when like things work out. Yeah, like sometimes you got to have perspective in life. Things may not work out, you know. Let's look back at that 2017 tape we just looked at. Let's start the show. Man, look at the power rank. Look at the teams back then. Tony's Pizzeria. Tony's Pizzeria, fabulous downtown, or sorry, not fabulous downtown. Fabulous North End by the Pennsylvania Port. Did that little rant. Tony's yeah. Pizzeria. I don't know the address anymore. Five five two Pennsylvania Avenue, Hagerstown, oh, Maryland. Five, yes, it, it was, was five somewhere. Out there. Yeah, I think we did about six episodes until I said I'm done. It was too much just driving there on a Wednesday night and then just. It was the last one I went to. We were talking in the parking lot. Yeah, you, like, you and I was like, dude, this is way out here. I'm not trying to drive out here no more. Like, I think a oh, lot of people felt that way. Like, oh, I need this good internet. I was like, well, I got excluded. God. You oh, were like, man. right off. <laughs> God. I didn't come out of your house yet either. I didn't, wait. I didn't get to that next spring. Yeah, I was like, I have, I have Xfinity in the garage. Yeah, and I was like, I, I, I don't know. I Now that, like, at first, I was, like, reluctant because, like, I wasn't sure, like, what to expect. Me neither. Yeah, like, <laughs> first time we did this. I didn't even live here that way. Yeah. yeah. You had just gotten there, like, yeah, like, literally. May 2016. May 2016, when you found out about alumni. Yeah. And right, about then, right here. Right here in the garage. You found right out here. about alumni. And then alumni led to you creating the Warriors with Keith Cameron and whoever else is involved in that. Joe, uh, Joe Klein, you, Keith, and Joe. Joe Klein went to the captain's meeting. Oh, wow. The boo pressed us all alumni. Praxis. Gosh, that's crazy to think about. That was all so long ago now, five years. Like, you know, let's put from four years ago. You look about what that was, because that season, that fall 2016 season, everybody talks about, like, when did this league start to take off? You know, a, a bunch of us who were there in the middle part of the decade, we'll tell you the first couple seasons when we started out, that fall season of 14, it was dead. You had the halves with Broad Axe, Red Knights, and X Dogs. You had, uh, Nighthawks, who, you know, Nighthawks had the lineage and connection to PG and Gold's Gym, some Storm guys. Like, there was still that connection to that prior franchise, but it was a little bit different than what it was at that point. 
um, was, or I believe Earl Thorne ran that team by then. They would evolve into the program in 2016, which they don't claim that, but right. it's yeah, this connection. There's a connection. There's like a, there's like a, it's like, it's like a lineage. It's like a succession. Like it's the same group of core guys. It's like I always say, like you get there is connections to older teams when you think about it, and trace back the origins of how a lot of these teams started. Like you can go back and find connections and like early tracings of certain franchises, which I always love doing. Um, but this season's gonna be pretty awesome because like. I really look forward to seeing what demons can do. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing where misfits end up. Misfits are going to be playing. In, I, I'm hearing three or four leagues. Like someone said, Maffle was going to happen. Um, I hope so. Let's see it. I hope it all happens. I hope it all happens. I want to. I want to be part of this. This is going to be a great season. So the way we're doing it this this fall, to give you an idea, this is going to be a generalized fall preview. Because from this point on, we're just going straight through the whole season. So next week, Wednesday night, we're going to go live probably about 9 o'clock. We're going to do media night for fall 2021. And that's because KFFL should have their schedule out by then. I have heard that Demons and Misfits will be the game. One of the games leaked out, Demons Misfits. I want to see what the others are. I'm looking forward to that, dude. I'm excited. That's going to be awesome. KFFL. That's, cool schedule yeah, that's what we're going to be on Saturdays. Um, we'll be doing the same kind of coverage that I did with Keith the last few seasons where Keith will be the A announcer. I'll be the B announcer. Um, Keith calls certain games. I call certain games. Um, we just run it like that. If he's available, he'll do it. If he's up for it, if I'm available, I'll do it. You know, just keep it how we've been doing it. I've liked doing it the last few years. Um, been a great time up in Um, uh, we'll be there all every Saturday. I'll be there this fall. Um, aside from tournament week, we're looking forward to that. They're kicking off on September 11th. I think that's the Saturday. Um, they're going to be kicking off. I'm really excited to see Kevin felt there this fall. Um, they'll be the host area for Saturdays for this region, which is really good. Uh, a little bit different area to go to. Shippensburg and Hagerstown. I like Hagerstown. Marty Snook's a 15-minute drive for me, usually less, depending how fast I go. Um, don't go fast to West School Zone. They'll bite you on that. Um, but, like, you know, I, I look at it and – I look forward to being up there. Like, Marty Snook has always been home. I mean, Marty was my home as a kid watching flag football in this area. No idea what to go up to Marty Snook. I like Shippets Park, too. It's not the same thing. Don't get me wrong. It'll, it's never the same. No venue is ever the same as another. Like, Marty... Will always have great memories. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, and I'm not. <laughs> Marty will never be left behind. Like I don't know what's gonna happen. I believe Washington County will be back in some form. Like I said, I don't know the inner workings of what's happening. Yeah, I was involved in stuff. I was asked if I had any ideas or wanted to run for a commissioner. Nothing really got finalized. Nothing really got organized. Nothing really went anywhere. It's too late. It just happened that way. KFFL always had that lead in, and honestly, I'm okay with it. Like, I'm not going to sit here and gripe about where we're playing at one way or another. Like, we should just be grateful we have a facility to play in. And don't get me wrong. I liked Marty Snook Park. I loved Marty Snook Park. But then the few times I talked to people over there, I don't think it could have been the same. Because they're a lot, they're a little more strict than what they've been over the years. But a lot of that's also because of pavilion rentals and everything else. I know that, of course, drinking was a concern again, which we've been hearing that, cussing, of course, too. But that also comes with having other people in the surrounding area. Like you kind of gotten to a point with Marty where 
and we're from a nice secluded park where a lot of people would, would rent from time to time. But for the most part, it was just there for the games and stuff, most Saturdays. To what it is now where they're putting in different stuff. They got the little Marty's Woods area. They put a lot of money into that, the walking trail. They want to run out to Pavilion because that's 60, that's like some kind of figure to them um, of day, you know. And I don't blame them one bit. They're just trying to make, a, make it work. I think Shippensburg, I've always liked it a, lot, a little bit because of the fact that it's a very secluded facility at times. Like, it's in an area where you think we're in a city, but where we're at is, like, it's such a back part of another area that we can get that same kind of family feel that we had at Marty for years. And I felt that this spring in Shippensburg, you know, like, spring season, I wasn't at a home league on Sunday for once. We went to Omen for Phil on Sundays. Way right. different. I love the old method film. Had a great time. I'm going to be back down there this fall. Um, we're going to be doing games there on Sundays. I'm going to try to travel around. I want to do Maffle for a week. We're going to do York for this week. Um, I'm trying to get the GCFFA. I know I was supposed to go last week. That was a talk. I wanted to go. I didn't have to make the means to make it work on my end. And, of course, I had to deal with this pain in the back of my mouth from the tooth. So, like, but it's doing better, which is a nuisance. Um, yeah, it was a weird two weeks. Like, everything, like, Charm City was, like, the end for me. I, I met Blick. I was just kind of limping into Blick. Because I was just out of it by the time we hit Blick. Right. Um, which, a lot of that is professional burnout, which that happens. Um, I'm feeling better now. I'm ready to go. Professional bird. Yeah. You work hard. I'm just, you, know, you know what? I think I'm the. I'll be good this Sunday. It'd be nice to warm up. You'll be back in the flow. And then we're going to have KFFL on Saturdays every week. They're the only nine man league on Saturdays. We're going to be up there. I'll be helping out with them. We'll be having some local fun. Um, we're going to have Keith Show back, the extra yard, Keith Giles, 9 30 on Wednesday nights now. It'll be the 9.30 uh, show. Blunt Talk will be the 8 o'clock show on Wednesdays. Um, it'll be about our Sunday stuff, whether it be OMFFL, MAFL, GCFFA, YAFFL, a tournament. Anything going on will be covered on that end. Um, and we're also going to be running, of course, documentary content slash uh, compilation content. Um we got some of that coming, of course. The York tournament coming up next month, uh, late September, early October, second and third for October. That's going to be a big. That's going to be a big thing. We'll have the Clash of York two documentary out that week. Um, the very first TBT nine man cover tournament. You got me, Ross, and Tyler together for the first time on a field in a major circuit event. Um, all three of us doing games. That was a great time last year up in New York. Um, that was the start of where we of where we got into in the last year. So a lot of great times ahead. Uh, a lot of great footage too. Um, everybody's been putting in good work for a long time. I've been really proud of everything's going. Um, TBT and everything for state. Um, proud of y'all. Doing good. Good work, everybody. Um. Yeah, we're going to be going to about – fall season will wrap up at Thanksgiving. As of right now, I want to do a turkey bowl. I don't know how I'm going to do it, though, or what I want to do for it. I got to figure that out on my end. Um, but we'll run all the way till then. And then after that, we're going to have some content for nationals leading up to that before we run all the way to nationals. So this next run, we got, you know, we started this first leg back in uh, late March or mid March, ran all the way till August. Now we're at the end of it. Uh, YAFFL week one will be kind of the transition from summer to fall because we've been in York hella all summer. Um, so why not one more time, York, but right when they kick off their fall season, leading into the fall season coming up, 
OMFFL, KFFL, GCFFA, MAFL, YAFFL. We're going to have it when we can, any chance we get. We're going to have a lot of fun this fall. It's going to be a great time. Um, I'm looking forward to it. It's like from now to about mid January, we're on the second half of the year. And then nationals, of course, we'll be wrapping up the year's coverage around that time. And then we'll be in the off season. Yes, we'll have an off season, Ross. Believe it or not, there will be an off season this year. But till then, we got a lot of content coming. Wherever you are this fall, wherever you'll be, turn on TBT. I'm Joey Blaze. He's Ross Collins. That's me. Paul's here. We'll be back Wednesday night. Oh, after nine, I think. Somewhere around there. We'll figure it out. We're going to have an episode of Blunt Talk. We're going to do a media night. We will talk about what's to come for all the fall leagues this season. We'll see what's up. We'll keep you all updated. And then after that, we'll kick off our regular coverage. Blunt talk will be 8 o'clock. Actually, you know what? Let's call an audible. We're going to kick off Wednesday night. Blunt talk, 8. Extra yard of Keith Giles, 930. Local time. Every week, tune in this fall. TVT, Blunt Talk, Extra Yard, Keith Giles, Ross Collins, Joey Blaze, Keith Giles. We got to bring back somebody there. We got to bring back some people. We got to make this fun again. It's fucking fall, man. Let's make it fun. I'll see y'all soon. Sunday, 1 o'clock, TVT.